got your Bible. Amen. This is my Bible. This is the Constitution of the Kingdom of God. Amen. That's the Word of the Living King. Amen. Amen. I love His Word. Yeah. I want to read His Word. I want to devour His Word. I want to consume His Word. For His words, in His Word, these are words of life. Amen. And that's what we're. That's what God is all about. His life. He says, Jesus said in John 10, He says, I have come, He said, the thief came to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I have come to give them life and to give it to them more abundantly. Abundant life. How many of you want some abundant life? Okay. Amen. Now, one of the things you got to look at when you ask for or you think you want abundant life is you got to figure out what abundant life really is. Right. And then how does it come? It comes through the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. Right? He says, I came to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but Jesus is also, according to the book of John, Jesus is what? The Word, mm -hmm. which became yeah. flesh, okay? Right. So life comes through the Word of God. Life comes. Uh, uh, Peter said it this way when Jesus, uh, in John chapter 6, he was saying to um, his disciples, and I'll get to that in just a few moments, it's up on the screen. He said to his disciples in, in uh, John chapter 6, after the people had rejected him on the discourse of, of the bread, where he said, this is my body, take it, eat. You know, this is the, uh -huh. the, the bread, he said, was talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. Yeah. And he was talking about that. And then the people said, well, this is too hard to say and we're going to leave. And Jesus turns and he looks at his disciples and he says, are you going to leave too? But his disciples said to him, especially Peter, that he says to him, where else would we go? For you have the words of life. You have the words of life. So in order to have abundant life, now we're going to just we'll stop here in just a minute, but in order to have abundant life, you have to get be in the Word of God, and the Word of God has to be in you. Okay. And that is where many people stop, because that requires change. Oh, oh yeah. Told you just a few moments ago, I was going to mention this uh, when we went live on the internet there. And um, up on our board is the brochure for pastors Randy and Jamie Zeman in Baraboo, Wisconsin. They're going to be with us on June the 5th here in service. And I want all of you who are on social media who are in this area, and if you're not even in this area, still can tune in on social media. But I want if you're in this area, come and enjoy the ministry of Randy and Jamie Zeman. I believe this is a divine kingdom assignment. We call them divine appointments, but I believe this is a kingdom assignment for, uh, for Randy to come to this church and to share some of the things that are happening in their ministry in Durban, Wisconsin, for a revival is taking place there. And I'm, I'm hoping and praying that there's a hunger in the hearts of the people of Pace Lord. Amen. Amen. A hunger Amen. for God. A hunger for the Word of God. A hunger for the true relationship with the King of glory. And I, I just invite you to come and to be a part of that Amen. on June 5th, okay? We talked about just a moment ago about life. Life, right? right? Life more abundant. Yeah. It's in the Word. So many times, unfortunately, people come to church. Ooh, they don't even do that hardly anymore. Right. But they come to church 
and they'll open up the Bible and they'll read from what the sermon's about and then they'll go home and put their Bible down and not touch it for an entire week. Right. Or if they don't come back that week, maybe it's two weeks right. or maybe it's longer. They don't touch the Word of God. They just walk away from it. That's starvation yeah. in the spirit. You are literally starving yourself to death if you do not get into the Word of God spiritually. Mm -hmm. They overcame, the Bible says, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Yeah. Yeah. The word of God is absolutely vital in our lives. Okay? I'm going to share with you this morning a, a few things that the Lord just dropped into my heart over the week. Been working along uh, quite a while on some of this stuff. But this past week, he was bringing home the topic to me of knowledge. Knowledge. And where true knowledge comes from. We have different types of knowledge, but I want to get to godly knowledge here just a bit. In Psalm chapter 86, verse 11, it says, as the psalmist is crying out to the Lord a prayer of David, he's saying, teach me your way, O Lord. Teach me your way, O Lord. And I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify your name forevermore. Teach me. Teach. We are in a world right now that's very confused. We have a lot of knowledge about a lot of things. Can I share with you that right here is probably this is a tool. It's a, what they, we call a smartphone. And it's a, but it's a tool. And on this, I can find all kinds of knowledge. Knowledge is information. I can find all the information pretty much on any subject that I want right here in this little thing yeah. in the palm of my hand. And that knowledge is beneficial to a degree. But this is not the knowledge that we need. It's the knowledge that we get from Google, from Wikipedia, from YouTube videos. Those are helpful. We go to YouTube videos quite often to find out how to do things such as gardening practices and stuff of that nature. And those are good. But generally, can I share with you that those practices that they tell you on there are generally based on the knowledge of man and on the knowledge of God? God wants us to have knowledge. Now think about this. Think about it. God created Adam and Eve. Now we know that Adam and Eve sinned, that they fell. But before they did, and we can gather this because the scripture tells us that after they sinned, God came walking in the cool of the day, hunting Adam. Now, I think that we can come to a conclusion that that was God's normal practice was to walk with Adam every day. And that walking
talking with him, at least in my estimation, was for the purpose of giving information to Adam. So that Adam could be, or he could function in the earth, just like God designed him to function. He was made in his image and in his likeness, and so God is pouring into him his knowledge, his wisdom, his understanding. Right? All right. Think about it. Think about it. Because now, what happens? Satan comes in, and he goes to the one place that God said, do not go. And that is to the place of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay? So what happens is Eve says that this is pleasing to the eye, she said. Oh, it's nice to look upon. Oh, and, and it makes, you know, it tastes good. And, and, and she gets over there in the knowledge that was forbidden. God's knowledge is never forbidden, and God's knowledge will lead us to life. The knowledge that flows from the tree of the, 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 the comes from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is forbidden. Can, can I share with you today that what was forbidden then is forbidden now? Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about knowledge of how a mechanical thing may work. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about knowledge that is opposite of the knowledge of God. That which tells us to do things which God says don't do. Right. That is still forbidden today. His knowledge. Teach me thy ways, David says. Now we know the scripture says that David was a man after God's own heart. And David was saying, teach me your ways. Teach him to me, Lord. Because when God begins to teach us his ways, what he's doing in a simplistic form is he is sharing with us his understanding of everything. Teach me, Lord. How did you design that to work? Teach me, Lord. That I may know your way. Because in your way, in your word, is life. Remember when we said that about Peter said? In your way is life. Teach me, Lord God, your way, in a way everlasting that leads to life. And you know it's God's desire to teach us. He wants to teach us. Don't you turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. Now, I want you to understand that God prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Okay? He, he prepares it. Now, I look at the church today, here, Destiny Bible Church, and, 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 and this is my prayer to the Lord. Lord, you have prepared a table for your people today. Lord, help me as your servant to be able to take from the table and share with my brothers and sisters the things that God has prepared so that we can dine with the Lord on his holy word. Amen? He has prepared for us a meal. Now here's the thing. How many of you know that there's going to come a great wedding. Yes. And the invitation has gone out to that great wedding. Okay. And there are people today who are saying, I don't want anything to do with it. I'm too busy about my own stuff. 
I got this to do and I got that to do and so I got and, and I just don't feel like it and so therefore I'm, I'm not going to participate in the table that you have prepared for me. You see, they do that. They're doing that in the wedding, and people are saying that today. Every time God says, He says, "I've got a table for you. I've got something for you." And guys, can I tell you this? Don't ever let the devil trick you into not dining at the table of the Lord. God, he will, he will play every trick he can possibly play to keep you from dining at the table of the Lord. His word is what he feeds us from the table. His word that gives us life. Why do we eat food? We eat food, the bottom line is to live. We like some of the food that we eat, right? right. It tastes good. Yes. It's it's sweet sometimes. Yes. We like sweet food. Yes. Okay. Sometimes it's salty. We like salty food. Yes. Amen. God's word is like the honeycomb. It's like honey upon my lips. Amen. God's word is like salt that preserves us. It's a medication, a medicine for us. God's word. We feed upon that word and it brings us life. It's not just the, for us to survive, but it's for us to enjoy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Nothing better, nothing better than to get in the in a house of joy and, and, and around people that are excited uh, around a table of food and are sharing the good things that are going on in their life with one another. It's nothing better than for men and women to come together in the house of God and to eat from the table of the Lord and to share with one another in the joy of the Lord. Yes. Oh, what a blessing. Yes. What a blessing God has given unto us. Yes to come and dine in His table, to partake of His knowledge. That's what it's about, guys. Is God wants to share with us His heart. He wants us to know everything that He knows. Now here's the interesting thing, though. You'll never know everything God knows because He's infinite. And so we cannot exhaust what God knows in a lifetime. Right. It will take an eternity plus to know everything that God knows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Such great wisdom. He created the world with that great wisdom. Yeah. With that great understanding. He hung the stars in the sky. He, he, he created it all from His great wisdom. And He says, I want to share with you everything that I've ever done. Awesome. Isn't that amazing? What an invitation for us to come and to partake of the knowledge of God. Did I, I said turn to chapter 5 of Matthew. Did I ever get there? I never did read it. Okay. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 1, and seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth, and he taught them. He taught them, saying, and then he goes into the greatest sermon ever preached to the face of the earth in all of history, the greatest sermon. He taught them that. That same Jesus that sat down on the mountain that day with those people and He opened up His heart to them to share the knowledge that He had. It's the same Jesus that we can sit down with today by the power of the Holy Spirit to receive the words of God. The wisdom of God. Turn with me, if you would, please, to Proverbs. 
Now, now Jesus says that his gospel, his word, gospel means good news. So he says that his word is good news. And that's what he's sharing with us. The knowledge of God is good news to us. Well, at least I think so. You got Proverbs chapter 2? Proverbs chapter 2. Can we back up? Yes. To chapter 1? Okay. The Proverbs, chapter 1 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. Wow, did you hear that? God is saying that for us to know wisdom, this is the purpose of the writing of Solomon, for us to know wisdom. And the writing of Solomon is an inspired word of God. To understand a proverb and an enigma, the words of the wise and their riddles, to the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Guys, let me tell you something. The day, this book right here is the wisdom of heaven. It's the wisdom of God. And the day that we say, and we put it over on the shelf, and we don't pick it up, that's the day. Can I say this and not with criticism? This is revelation, not condemnation, as a good friend of ours would say. That is foolishness. Amen. That is foolishness to put the wisdom of God on the shelf and not Get it into our hearts. Amen. Glory to God. He wants to share His knowledge with us. His wisdom with us. Amen. Right. Amen. Take this thing and throw it away sometimes. How many times do we get trapped with it? Amen. We're in we're at Facebook, neighborhood, YouTube, whatever it is, we're all over in these places. When we need to be into the Word of God. Amen. I'm not against cell phones. A tool can be used for good and a tool can be used for bad. Right. I, I like the way Miles Monroe used to say, he said, I, I can take a knife and I can peel you in arms and give it to you or cut your throat with it. It depends on how we use it. Amen? Amen? I can use this thing to research the Word of God or I can use it to look at the trash of the world. The knowledge that leads to death. I could care less if a couple is having... Forgive me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to say this correctly. If a couple is having a trouble in their marriage, it does not need to be broadcast across the entire TV and everybody looking at the trial of this marriage. Right. Right. What does that do? How does that help us to live According to the Word of God. Not a bit. No. And I would be ashamed to publicize my life like that across the Amen. airwaves. Amen. Glory to God. Where have we gone? Every time you turn around, oh, I'm going to meddle. I'm going to get into it. Every time you turn around today and you open up the phone, you got some woman declaring how proud she is of her body and exposing it all over the world. Shame on you! Get your heart right with God! Amen. It disgusts me every time I see that. I could care less. I want to know if that woman bowed her knee before God in the secret place. That's what I want to know. Has she given her heart to Jesus? I'll celebrate with her on that one. Glory to God. I want to know the good things of God, not the things of this world. That's right. 
Jesus is my King. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Redeemer. Jesus is my Savior. You know what the Lord shared with me this morning? I think I have the liberty to share it right now. Came out of the Samuel, out of the book of Samuel. He says, they haven't rejected you. They rejected me. Those people who do not come and worship in my house, they haven't rejected those pastors that are preaching. They have rejected the Lord God Almighty who gave them the decree to be in His house. Am I going to get myself in trouble yet? Not yet. Wisdom and understanding. I'll back off. <laughs> Wisdom and understanding. Let's go Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. I can't help it if it comes out. I'm going to preach what God gives me. Amen. squares. She cries out in the chief concourses at the openings of the gates in the city. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? For scorners delight in scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Now, it's not talking about worldly knowledge. It's talking about godly knowledge. Okay? Verse 28. No, let's go and read. Let's go and read. Where are you at? Proverbs chapter 1, uh, verse 20. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got right uh, I told you I was going back up. I'll read it again. Wisdom calls aloud outside. She raises her voice in the open square. She cries out in the chief concourses. At the openings of the gates in the city, she speaks her words. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? For scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. You see what God's saying? I will make my words known to you. Because I have called on you, called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded because you disdained all my counsel and you would have none of my rebuke. I also will laugh at your calamity and I will mock when your, your terror comes, when your terror comes like a storm and your destruction comes like a whirlwind when distress and anguish come upon you. Now people are wondering how come they're in the situations that they're in so many times. What's happening in my life? Why am I going through this? Why is this happening with me? Why is this going on? It's because they turn their back on the knowledge of God. And God says to them in verse 28, Then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord and would have none of my counsel. Wow! I don't generally preach like this, but the Spirit of the Lord just it, it, it got me excited. How many times have we rejected the knowledge of God for the knowledge of this world? How many times have we walked away when God's wanting to share with us wisdom? Let me tell you something. I told you last week about the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit, and, and there were the three E's. You need the Holy Spirit to enter into the kingdom of God. You need the Holy Spirit to be educated in the ways of the kingdom. And you need the Holy Spirit to be empowered. Okay? The Holy Spirit is our teacher today. Our comforter, our helper. And so what He does, He teaches us the ways of God. The Scripture says in John chapter 14, I believe it is verse 16, He says that He has come, the Spirit of truth, to teach us the ways of God. The Spirit of truth. And he's our teacher. Teaching us the ways of God. Wow. 
God's not. Folks, might as well let it roll. God's not your buddy buddy if you're not walking in his ways. If you're not walking in his word. Amen? Amen. If you're ignoring his knowledge, if you're ignoring his word, the Holy Spirit's not your buddy. Just come alongside. It'll be, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. You'll, see, you'll be fine as we continue to walk in the ways of the world. No. He's the one who says, listen here, I've got the information that you need in order for you to get out of that situation. But you're going to have to come and you're going to have to follow these words of wisdom that I give you in order that you can experience the life that God created you to live in. You know, two things in the, in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Two, two things which are mentioned there in the very beginning of the Revelation gifts. The word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. The word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. Still today, God is wanting us to seek His knowledge and God is wanting us to seek His wisdom. And He's given us His Holy Spirit to lead us in those things. Knowledge and wisdom. Alright, let's go on. Well, let's go to verse 31. I got that circle, that circle there. Of, of chapter 1. Okay? Yes, sir. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way Amen. and be filled to the full with their own fancies. If, you, if we choose to not follow after the Word of God or the knowledge of God, then we choose to walk in our own way. Remember, we started this off with David saying, teach me your ways. Right. If we decide to walk in our own ways, then God says, guess what? You're going to eat the fruit of your way. Yeah. Not fruit the fruit of Yahweh, but the fruit of your way. Uh, All right. Amen. Yeah, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I hope and pray that this is speaking to our yeah. hearts today. Amen. amen. God is looking for a people that is saved. Lord, I want your word. Like David, I want you to teach me. I want you to teach me your word. You know what Jesus said? What's a command? It's an instruction, right? It's an instruction. Fools despise instruction. It's an instruction, and it's his way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's his way. So, when, where was I at this? <laughs> if we want to eat the fruit of Jesus, the fruit of God, we're going to have to walk in His way, and His way leads to life. If we walk in our own way, we're going to get our own fruit in our own ways. And how many times have we walked in our own way when God is saying to us here, here's the way to life. But we've chosen to walk in our own way instead of God's way. Right. And then we say, God, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me, God? Why am I experiencing this thing in my life? Lord, the devil must be doing this to me. Right. And it's not the devil right. doing it to anybody. What it no. is is us walking in our own way, in our own understanding, right. and not acknowledging His way. So we end up getting the fruit of our own way. All right. Chapter 2. Chapter 2. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, yes, if you cry out, if you cry out for discernment, and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver, and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from the mat from hit. Now listen to this. For the Lord gives wisdom. From His mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the up, 
right. Did you hear that? Yeah. Where does wisdom come from? From the mouth of the Lord. Where does understanding his knowledge and and let me just read it. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Yes. Now how many of you remember there's a scripture in John chapter 8 and it's verse 31 and 32 where Jesus says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Right, right, right. Okay. The word here for knowledge is the word word Dath, D-A-A-T-H in Hebrew. And it, what it means is, one of its definitions is truth. Okay. Knowledge is truth. Jesus says if you know the truth, if you have knowledge of truth, of the reality of the kingdom, of the way things really work, then guess what it's going to do? It's going to set you free to be everything God ever did, called you to be, everything He designed you to be. Hallelujah. I'm going to try to close this. Go with me if you would to, to Habakkuk. Habakkuk. <laughs> Habakkuk chapter 2. It's one of those little minor prophet books that hides there in the middle. Right? Yeah. Habakkuk. I talked about this last week mm -hmm. a little bit. Verse 14, chapter 2, verse 14. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Yeah. Okay? The, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Now, there was someone I had a conversation with uh, not, uh, this, this past week, and, and, and it was about this thing of knowledge. Actually, I had a conversation on Tuesday up in Montgomery in regards to it, and I had another conversation here. Uh, I think it was on Thursday. But anyway, knowledge. Knowledge is not just about knowing that there is a God. That, that, that is a form of knowledge. Knowledge is not just about knowing God, but knowledge is about knowing what God knows. Amen. And so he has given us the Holy Spirit to teach us what he knows. So what happens is God is saying there's coming a time that his knowledge, his knowledge, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. The glory is the character of God. The nature of God. That's his character and his nature, we, it, they're combined with his, what, understanding. So we know that God is saying, my understanding, my knowledge, my way of doing things, my character, my nature are going to fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. Now, how I many of you know that if the water covers the sea, you're going to get wet? Yes. Right? Yes. That's a lot of liquid that's going to cover it. <laughs> right? Right. You're going to get wet. Uh -huh. Go out there and look at the Gulf. What's, what's that? Get in that water, you're going to get wet. wet. Uh -huh. Saturated. Amen. Don't be nice, isn't it? Uh -huh. Especially on hot days like we've been having. It would be nice and cool to get out there in some of that water. This morning, about 4 o'clock, the Lord woke me up. It's time to get up. Time to get up. Uh -huh. And he says this to me. Wet! But it wasn't W-E-T, wet, mm -hmm. the liquid. It was W. H-E-T, wet. The word W-H-E-T, wet, as W-E-T, means to be covered with liquid. It's covered with liquid. The word wet, W-H-E-T, and I saw it, the letters, and I'm sitting there trying to figure out what this is all about. And so I get up and I look at the definition of the word wet, and it is to sharpen 
or to stimulate. So God said, it's time to get up and to be sharpened. It's time to get up and to be stimulated. And I'm going to tell you, it's not, not just for me, it's for the church. It's time that we begin to get stimulated. Amen? It's time we begin to get sharpened by the Word of God. Amen. Glory to God. In His presence, as He shares His knowledge with us, He's sharpening us to become everything that He wants us to be. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you want to be wet? Yeah, we talked about rain down. We like that rain of the Holy Spirit raining down. But I think also is we need to be rained down upon in the place that way that we are sharpened. Sharpened by God and by His Word. Another thing about knowledge. Remember I told you it's educated. Educated is what the Holy Spirit does. He gives us interest into the kingdom, and then He educates us in the ways of the Lord. He sharpens us, right? He stimulates us. Another thing He does is He empowers us, we talked about. Because the word knowledge over in Habakkuk chapter 2 is the word yada. A little different than that. But it's the word yada. And the word yada has part of its meaning as ability. Okay. Ability. Now when Jesus went and went to be with the Father, He told the, the disciples, He said, go to Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit and He will endue you with power. Now if you go and look at the word power, that's dunamis, and it also means ability. So God is wanting to give us instruction so that we have the ability. I'm hoping, hoping you catch this. Uh, he goes to give us instruction so that with the Holy Spirit can empower us with ability. Now, instruction is knowledge. Wisdom is knowledge applied. It's the ability to be able to use the knowledge. Okay? So Peter, on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came down upon him, it, it wasn't, the focus wasn't about speaking in tongues, but the focus was the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that came upon him for the teachings that Jesus Christ had done to him and for him. The Holy Spirit was bringing those back to his memory. He was empowered with the Word of God. He preached a sermon that 3,000 people were saved. That's power. Amen? That's ability. If it had just been uh, speaking in tongues, no, nope, everybody would have been confused. Right, right. But he had the ability to be able to tell them really what was being said in tongues. And that ability caused people to get saved. The Holy Spirit is preparing the church for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Golly. Now, Robin, I just got a, I just got a picture. You had a bunch of military recruits. Yes. And they went to the boot, basics and boot camp and served in the military. But they said, we don't want anything to do with this training. We're just going to stay in our bed. We don't want anything to do with this training. First of all, it wouldn't be stood for. Right. Okay. The second thing is, when they got ready to go into any kind of battle, or they got ready to do any kind of mission, they could not accomplish their mission because they would have had no training. So they would have had no ability to be able to accomplish their mission. And why do we think it's so different in the church today when people do not want to be educated, they do not want to be trained in the knowledge of God by the Holy Spirit so that they can accomplish the mission that God has sent us forth to accomplish. Wow. Wow. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Am I okay with you guys? Yes. Everybody still okay? Yes. Hallelujah. 
I'm preaching to the choir, right? Amen. Yes, you are. You guys want the knowledge of God, right? Yes. You want to know what God thinks. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. You hunger and thirst for His righteousness. Can I tell you this now? Let me go back and I'll conclude. I got seven minutes. Yes. Actually, as long as the Holy Spirit wants. Right. Here, here's the thing. Solomon, when he was appointed king after his father David, Solomon, who wrote this Proverbs that we just read, he's considered the wisest man on the face of the earth. Right. Solomon, when he first became king, God came to him in 2 Chronicles, you can read this in 2 Chronicles, chapter 2, I believe it is. And as you, the Lord came to him, and the Lord asked him, he said, Solomon, what would you have me do for you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know what Solomon said? Mm -hmm. All right, let's turn there. Okay. Second Chronicles. Chapter 1, I'm sorry, I said chapter 2. It's chapter 1. And we'll start with verse um, 7. And on that night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask what shall I give you? And Solomon said to God, You have shown great mercy to David my father and have made me king in his place. Now, O Lord God, let your promise to David my father be established. For he, you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Now give me, what's this, wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people for whom you, who can judge this great people of yours. And then God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart, and you have not asked riches or wealth or honor or life of your enemies, nor have you asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that ye may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you, and I will give you riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had who were before you, nor shall any after you have the like. Did you hear what happened? Yeah. He went after the wisdom of God. He went after the knowledge of God. Right. He didn't ask for the knowledge of any earthly man. He didn't ask for the natural knowledge of this world. He asked for the wisdom and the knowledge of God, which is far superior than the wisdom of this world. The wisdom of this world is foolishness to those who understand the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is what he went after. Right. And God said, when you do that, when you did that, and may I say, when you do that, God will add to you the material things of this world. Now I'm going to prove it to you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What is the kingdom of God? Can I tell you this? It is the government of God. It is the way of God. It is what God desires. And when we seek His way, His government, we're seeking His knowledge, we're seeking His wisdom, He says, when you do that, when you do that, everything else that you need in life, I will make sure that you have it. Amen. Amen? Amen? Yes. So can I tell you, or challenge us today, that we pursue the knowledge of God Amen. over the knowledge of this world. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to say it this way. When something happens in your life, whether it's in your finances, whether it's in your marriage, whether it's in your health, quit running to the ways of the world and the knowledge of the world. The first place we need to go is to the throne room of God to obtain knowledge of what is going on in our lives. Amen. Amen. 
Why are my finances the way they are? And God will give you knowledge in regards to it. And He will give you ability, wisdom. Yes. Yes. He'll give you the ability to be able to apply the knowledge. Uh -huh. right. Works in every area of our life. That's the way it works. Yes. Yes. Run to God. Amen. Just think if Eve would have run to God his knowledge and concerning that oh, instead of goodness. running to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right. running to another source, what would have happened? Mm -hmm. She would have saved herself a lot of heartache. Yeah. She would have saved her children a lot of heartache. Mm -hmm. Who we are right. in the flesh. We all came from Adam and Eve yes. in the flesh. In the spirit, though, you're a child of God. Amen. In fact, you said it earlier this morning, in prayer early this morning. Father, let us crawl up into your lap yes. and receive from you. Amen. Let us listen to your great wisdom, to your great understanding, Amen. so that we can live our lives pleasing to you. Amen. Glory to God. Well, guys, that's all I've got. <laughs> Father, help us this day to walk in pursuit of knowledge, mm -hmm. heavenly, kingly, godly knowledge, and a pursuit of wisdom, your wisdom, that, Lord, that we may we may show the glory of the knowledge of God throughout the earth. And we give you praise, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. Be here next week. Come back again. Wednesday night. Wednesday night, 6.30. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All right.